Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of uh, Lou Richards and Sergio Silvani. That's the commentators up here in the box. Uh, the That's Gosnell's over today. Football League would like to congratulate Maddington on their tremendous win in the reserves. Well done. We've just seen Maddington win the reserves game by about nine goals. I'd just like to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that drinking liquor on this oval is prohibited and that you are liable to prosecution. Yeah, the Kenwick Colts uh, came a draw today Welcome in their encounter with the Gosnells. Grand final in the league between Kenwick and Colescott. There is a change in the Kenwick side. Number 11 for Kenwick is Ian Livingston. And in the Colescott side, number 2 is Graham Scarry. We've had a great day for it here today, Lou. Yes. Sure. She's about, uh, for the grand final of the South Suburban Murray Football League. Uh, goal. Make Don the Brown, there, Terry look. Nielsen. Boundary. Ron Kelman and John Shogger. And field John Nicholas and Graham Zanich. Congratulations to all the people involved in the grand final and may the best team win. There we see the uh, Kenwick banner going up and the Kenwick players now running onto the field. Led by Graham Nicholas, captain coach. There we see uh, Mark Triplett, he'll be a danger man today. And there go the Kenwick Bloons. Barry Nicholas, a veteran running out. He looks fiery fit too. And there's and there's a spearhead, the secret weapon, Ashy. And now here come the Kelmscott players. Boom! So I notice number three there, Richard Uckman. He looks fired up and ready to go. We have the Uckman brothers playing today. Uh, there they go, through the streamers. Yes, and that'll be the only touch you get all day. We see uh, Ricky Uckman playing for Kelmscott and his brother Pissy playing for Kenwick in the centre. We're set for a great game today after the draw in the Colts and then the Maddington winning by nine in the reserves. Perfect conditions today. Slight breeze blowing towards the northern end of the ground. But you couldn't ask for better conditions, could you, Lou? No, this is right, Sid. And, uh, both teams being very good fine weather players, but I think Kenwick have the edge. Kenwick are like those runners, the small running players like the triplets and the wish arts and the boundaries. Yeah. Now, th these sort of players they've got can tall, just... They've got Tim and two, though, don't forget. Yeah, they've got, they got, they got Timmermans at full back. Now, yeah. now, he's a danger man. But uh, I can just see uh, Kenwick running out winners by five goals. That's my tip. What about you, Lou? I reckon it'll be uh, a bit closer than that somehow, uh, Serge. And we've got the black flash Allen boundary. Boy, can he handle the ball that way. Yeah. yeah, we've got Billy in the ruck uh, with, I think, Rosie. And there we see running out front for Kelmscott. Well, we haven't got him on the picture at the moment, but that's Mark Riley, bomber. He'll be playing on Phil Timmermans and they'll have a good tussle today, I'm sure of it. Just uh, to mention the Kenwick lineup before we start, number one we've got Mark Triplett, number two Ray Greenwell, uh, David Rhodes number three, Arthur Jago, Brad Brown, Peter Ashworth, Neil McCormack. I think he'll sit on the interchange bench. We've got uh, Jeff Franklin, Graham Nicholas, Colin Wishart. Phil Thomas was unlucky to miss out today on selection, and uh, we see Ian Livingston taking his place. Oh, Wayne Ogg, the veteran vice-captain. I'm sure he'll put in a big one today. He always saves his best footy for finals. Then we've got Watto, Barry Nicholas, Phil Timmermans, Chris Uckman, Timmy Costley, Daryl Harris, Kev Beal, and Alan Boundary. Players just over there stretching up now. Important not to do an injury. This is uh, Kenwick's first grand final, if they can take this off today. I think they played one before and got done by Mandra. Going back a few years, but uh, if they can win this today, it'll be a first. Yep. And we're you, all behind them. <coughs> what do you think about the umpiring today? Do you reckon they'll, uh, Mr. Zanich, who will well, just scan across and have a look at? We see uh, John Nicholas, uh, one of the field umpires, and uh, Zanich is the other one. Zanich has been known to uh, give Kenwick a hard time. John Nicholas, on the other hand, he's a fair umpire, and uh, we usually get a fair run from John. Even Zanich agrees with you, just nodding his head. Yes, yes, I'll tell you agrees with you. We'll see, I'll have a few comments about the umpires later on in the game, depends on how they perform. 
I think the uh, captains will be coming over now for the toss. Here we see some of the Kelms got line up. No real danger men there, I don't think. All the danger players playing in blue and black today. A few of the uh, Kenwick players sporting the latest in fashion as far as hair hairdos go. We see uh, Dave Rhodes looking very much like Billy Idol with his uh, short back and sides there. Ashy weighing in looking like Mark Jackson. Uh, Livo, yes, very impressed with his hairstyle. The blonde bombshell, he's trying to take off Wish. Wish has been setting the fashion in hair for a good six months now. Uh, Barry Nicholas, he's wearing a headband, looks very sporty. We see Alan Boundary, he's got his curls, he's wearing them a bit tighter today. So he can get up there a bit higher, I feel. We did have Timmy Costley with plaits. I'm just trying to pick up if Tim's still got his plaits on. He had a couple of plaits there with black and blue uh, ribbons in them. the top of the coin, we have the Mayor of Godmalls, Mr Lyle Richardson. There goes the toss. Graham's won it, and Graham's Kenwick going with the breeze, and that's a great, that's great inspiration for Kenwick. Yeah, that's for sure, Serge. We'll win the toss, we'll win the game, we'll win the fights. Mike Rocky, we'll win everything. And there we see the water boy, Ron Pensini. That's all right. Phil Thomas not looking very happy about missing out. Looks like they're having a mothers' meeting down here. Yes, well, something's going on there. Mothers' meeting for fun. A bit of a scrum, I think. Yeah. And there we see. Uh, I think we've got Neil McCormack and Ray Greenwell sitting on the bench for the start of this game. The players take their positions. This is a very impressive lineup we've got for Kenwick. We've got a great centre line here. <coughs> Colin Wishart, Alan Boundary on the wings. And I think we have uh, Pissy Uckman in the middle. No, it's Wade. Wade to play centre today. Jags having a run on the ball. As is Trip Alan Bealey. And I think that's a, uh, that's a great uh, centre line up there. And I can see us getting the ball out of the middle quite often. Can you agree with that, Lou, or what? Yeah, I'll go along with that. Serge, uh, Serge, Serge. <laughs> a bit of talent coming down to uh, have a look at this. Oh, yes, yes, I spotted so, a couple of norks, I mean, uh, a couple of birds over there before. Yeah. And, well, that's just, it's all part of the game. I mean, what a great turnout today. There'd be, uh, I'd say, close on, what do you reckon there, five, six thousand maybe here today? Well, it could be, yes, I'd say close to that. And they're ready to go. There goes a sign for the start of the first quarter in the 1983 SSM NFL Grand Final. There goes the first bounce. Billy wins that one out. Watto can't take it clearly. But picked up now by Pissy who has a left footer. Down towards Timmy. Spins around. Over the trip. He gets tackled. And that's too high. Not quite within scoring distance, I don't think. He'd be about 50 metres out. Hang on. He's given it the other way. I think Pissy's gone in and have a word to the Kelmscott player. And the uh, umpire's seen it. And he's given it to Kelmscott. Of course, the nerves will be getting to the players in this early stage of this grand final. There goes the kick, and that's a fine mark by Watto. He could sink it from there, Watto. He's only about 100 metres out. Lex for the long drop hunt. Lands in the square. Now she can't take the mark. There goes Lindsay Cowell for Kelmscott. Tackled greatly by Tim. Dropping the ball. You, no, you can't play on there, Gons. Although it would have been nice, went through the goal. And we see Mark Triplett to take the kick. He's at about the true uh, centre-half forward position for the Kenwick side. We cross to the Bennett Hardware scoreboard. We see the score there. Nil all at this stage. We're only 10 seconds into the game. That's understandable. Trippo plays on. He's got Watto out there. He's hotly pursued. Gets the kick in. Timmy's having a fit of the fumbles. Can't gain control. Trippo has a Clayton's kick. In goes Jags. Desperation wins out. Trippo gets boot to ball. And that's through for a point. So the first score on the board goes to Kenwick as a minor score. Kenwick one point, Kelm's got yet to score. Waiting for the ball to come back. I think someone might have souvenired it, Lee. Yeah, with a crowd like this, it's easy to lose a ball. Hmm. There goes the kick in. That's a long kick. Good 40-metre kick. 
Field flies for Kenwick, can't take the mark. The ball comes to ground. Pushed out by Calm Scott. In goes Pissy Uckman. Well done. Side steps. Sees Beal, and that's the way the kick goes. Well, you'll have to come back there, son. Beal, sends the kick in the centre half forward, looking for Ashworth. But over the back is Remo Vacker for Calm Scott. Takes a fine mark. And the umpire's found 15. Kevin Beal drops what he should have taken. Picked up by Sidey. He goes long. In comes Ricky Uckman. Ricky Uckman's taken a mark. Five yards out. Right in the middle of the goal square. And I don't think you'll have any trouble shooting from there. This is Ricky Uckman. He's a bit of a danger man. There goes the kick. You can put your glasses down, Lou. That's through for a major. Six points on the board to Kelm Scott. And I think we've got a game on our hands. I can't see Kelm's got half forwards there. He's starting right up the ground. Shippo can't take position, but gets the handball out now. Finds Franklin straight through. Gets the kick down there, but only as far as Steve Vickers for Kelm's got. He kicks in towards the centre now. Finds that player. There goes the handball over to Remo Vacker. He kicks long down the centre half forward, but only as far as baby Brad Brown takes a fine mark in defence. He's looking for Watto. Watto's called for it. It's all Kelm's got though, and the ball beats him over the boundary line as we see uh, Sherpy going for that mark. Bruce Stevenson, the wingman there, number 14 for Kelm's got. There goes the throwing up, goes Bill. He wins the tap back to Jays. Livo comes in, takes possession, gets it over to Pissy. He gets a high tackle, gets the handball back to Livo. Shepherd off by Jags. That's good football over to uh, Captain Graham Nicholas. In goes uh, Timmy Costley hard, picked up by Livo, puts it on the left boot. It's going to be cleared by Calm Scott here. In goes Dave Rhodes hard, as she's in there fighting, gets it out to Trippo. But Calm Scott quite solid in defence, and they see that ball over the boundary line for a boundary throw in. And then left, uh, left half forward flank. Oh no, it's a kick in, sorry. Kelmscott get the kick in. Barely uh, spoils. In goes uh, Butcher, I think, for Kelmscott. Overwards Bazza Nicholas, the veteran. The ball bounce beats him. He applies a tackle though. That's dropping the ball. Play on calls the umpire. Handball goes to the centre. Fresh air shot, that one. There goes the spiral drop punt. But again, only as far as uh, Daryl Harris takes a fine mark in defence. Good reader of the plays, Harris. He looks for Bealey. Off the pack. There goes Black Flash Allen Boundary. Picks the ball up. Well shepherded by uh, Watto. Drives the ball long. Looking for Rhodesy. He flies high. Can't take the mark. I think the uh, lack of oxygen might have uh, done him in there. Uh, Timmy Cossey now picks the ball up. He's on his wrong foot. Turns around. Gets his on the right foot. He gets flattened after the ball. He's got to get a kick up the ground. Umpire calls play on. Ash is in there. Can't get boot the ball. Chippo puts it up. Picks it up. Onto the slipper. And that's uh, that's out of bounds for a boundary throw in. Timmy Costley got a hard knock there. But like Tim always does, he'll get up and go on with it. Now it was out of bounds on the full. Callum's got to take the kick in. Timmy Costley in the hands of the trainers. But I think he'll be all right. Pissy gets boot the ball. Livo applies a tackle. Umpire John Nicholas says, I'll bounce it, thank you very much. As she goes up for the knock for Kenwick. Knocks it down. Allen Boundary can't take it. Picked up by Watto. In goes Jay lending a hand. He gets a hard tackle. Knocks it forward only as far as Ricky Uckman for Kelm Scott. Gets the kick in, finds Butcher. He drops what he should have taken. Daryl Harris comes in, lend a hand, and the ball goes over the boundaries. What a boundary throw in now on the uh, grandstand wing. Slightly favouring the Kelmscott into the ground. 
In goes Kellum Scott through his side bottom. He gets a left foot kick only as far as Dale Harris. He can't take the mark. Phil Timmerman's in there lending a hand. He gets the ball now. Kicks long. That's good football. Finds Arthur Jago in the middle. He takes a fine mark. No, he's put that down. Kellum Scott with the ball now. And there's Pissy Uckman. He plays on. Gets a boot to ball. Kenwick not looking where they're kicking. That only goes as far as Remo Vacker. Ball out there on the wing now. Picked up by Kellum Scott. That's a kick along the ground, looking for Woody. He can't take it. And there's been a high tackle applied on the Kellum Scott player there, and he'll take the free kick. He's about 40 to 50 yards out from goal. I don't think he can score from there. Phil Timmons closely guarding Mark Riley there. Sport behind by Daryl Harris. Ball goes to ground, picked up by Franklin. He's got the ball now. Looks for Wishart. Wishart fumbles, picks it up. Sells a dummy, spins around and he's off. Has a bounce. He's got a paddock. Gets the handball over to Barry Nicholas. He gets the handball over to brother Graham Nicholas. Picked up now by I don't know who. Oh, great tackle. Some scrambly play over on that scoreboard wing. Two Kellum Scott players fly for the ball. I think he's paid the mark. No, there's a be a boundary throw in, sorry, on the uh, right half forward flank for Kenwick. Dave Rhodes flies for that, knocks it as far as Livo. He picks it up, left foot kick. <coughs> Looking for Ashy, but the boundary line beats them both. So I'll have a throw in there on the uh, right full forward pocket for Kenwick. Well, the nerves getting the better of the players, I think. We've seen a lot of fumbling, a few mistakes. That's understandable. Rhodes wins the tap out. Kellum Scott win the ball now. <coughs> Through Uckman. Uckman looks for, no, he's only found Bealey out there on the wing. He's got Watto in the middle if he wants him. That's the way the ball goes. Intercepted there by Peter Adams. He drives it long, looks for Bomber. He drops what he should have taken. Phil Timmons puts a saddle on him, rides him, and Bomber to get the free kick. Unlucky Phil. <laughs> Bomber's about 55 metres out, goes the drop punt. That's a long kick, but there's Daryl Harris, ever reliable, waiting back in that square. Looks for the handball to Franklin, that's a good move. He's got Livo there. <laughs> Finds Barry Nicholas in the centre. Spins around his opponent, gets boot to ball. Looking for brother Graham, who takes a fine mark. He's got AB there if he wants him. Looks long for Ashy. Ashy with a great lead, and that's a fine mark and a great kick by Graham Nicholas. Ashy about 45 metres out on a slight angle, shouldn't have any trouble putting this one through. No, I wouldn't say. Uh, he kicked eight last week, or yeah. the week before, I should say. And I think he's got his kicking slippers on again today. That's it. <coughs> Good team week with Nicholas and uh, Ash will get together. You can put your glasses down. That's full. No, oh. I tell you what. Wouldn't have been a bee's dick in that one, mate. <laughs> Less than a bee's dick. Could have been a rock's dick in that one, I think. <laughs> That's gone through for a behind. And uh, Kelm's got to take the kick in now. Tell me that uh, Kenwick are having a swap meet next week. I'll bag sitting next to Rosie. Yes, I'll go along with that. Wishy gets boot to ball. Finds Bealey. Bealey gets the kick away. Looking for Nico and he finds that player. Nico says, I'll go along. He can score from there. Make sure this one I'd say. Just to leaving the score up. It's a good 45 metre kick. That's straight through for a goal. It's Kenwick's first goal on the board through captain coach Graham Nicholas. We cross now to the uh, Bennett Hardware scoreboard. We see uh, Kenwick one goal, two, eight points. Kelm Scott one goal, even six points. That goal coming about five minutes into this first quarter. We've got Barry Nicholas playing well off a half back flank at the moment. We've got Dale Harris playing good in defence. Bealing winning the hit outs, he takes that one. Court goes to ground, stacks on the mill. Umpire John notes Sanich says, I'll bounce it. Listen, Paul. Sanich bounces the ball. One by Kelmscott. 
Kid only as far as Franklin. He reads the bounce well, knocks it on. Callum Scott first in the race of the ball, but there goes Franklin through again. Gutsy effort. And he gets held without the ball and take the free kick. That's Jeff Franklin with the ball now. He looks long for Nicholas. Up goes Graham Nicholas. He's got two opponents. Wins out, gets a high tackle, and he'll take a free kick. Well, they're looking for their captain coach. What do you reckon, Lee? Yeah. He gets the ball now, looking for Trippo. Trippo will burn him off with pace. Favourable bounce. Kicks it back, looking for Rosey or Ashy. Ashy gets to the ball first. Spins around. That's a top shot for goal. Touch on the line and unlucky. That was a great effort by Ashy. He knew where those big sticks were. But the Kelm's got full back there, waiting back, touches the ball over and through for a point. That's Craig Bridey of Kelmscott. He gets the kick out there to his rover. Has two bounces, three bounces. <coughs> Kicks the ball out to the wing. No one there for Kenwick. Kelm's got on that outer wing now. It brings it back in towards the middle. Franklin goes up, spoils effectively. That was Oggy, sorry. And the ball's on the ground. Umpire Nicholas says, I'll bounce the ball. Barry Nicholas emerges from the bottom of that pack. Callum Scott win the knock as far as Ricky Uckman. He gets boot to ball looking for Bomber Riley. He can't take the mark. Oh, there should have been a Kenwick player backing up then. Has a shot. That's through for a goal. And Callum Scott put the second goal on the board. Well, I can't understand it. There was two players going against Riley then and no one waiting back. Should have been one going, one backing up. Nico, not looking too happy at this stage. No, he's given his side plenty. <coughs> like I said, these are early mistakes made in the first quarter of grand finals. Players still uh, got butterflies, liable to make a few uh, errors and misjudgments. Zanich to bounce, is it? No, that's some by John Nicholas. Oh, it's Zanich, sorry, yeah, I think you'll find. Good belt by Zanich. In goes uh, Bearley. I think he'll be rucking all day. Gets it as far as Allen Boundary. He gets it over to Watto. Super boot. Screws the punt in towards Livo. He's uh, held uh, Brian Arbor from Kelmscott without the ball and he'll get the free kick. Graham Nicholas on the mark for Kenwick. Arborn gets the kick in. Only as far as Daryl Harris who takes a fine mark. Spoiled Bearley on that occasion. Recovers well. Ball cleared out there now towards Franklin. He goes straight through. There goes Barry Nicholas. He's caught. Go ball goes to ground in there's Wishart for Kenwick. He can't pick it up. He's going to beat both of them. He's really given everything out there today. Trippo's in there. That's dropping the ball. What's the umpire done here? It's going to be a boundary throw in. I thought that was dropping the ball, Lou. What about you? Yes, I'd say so. Definitely. He, was in, uh, he was definitely in control of that at the time. Then we see Remo back again in boot to ball. Shuffled out there, handballed out to Kelm Scott. He's caught. In goes Watto. Picked up by Kelm Scott. The short kick looking for Bomber. Phil Timmerman's in front. That's the way to play it. Can't hold the mark. Gets it now to Phil. Spins, sells a dummy. That's good play. Looks long. Only as far as Kelm Scott who pulls in a great mark. Phil Timmons closely checking Mark Riley today. <laughs> there goes the kick out in the way of Butcher. <laughs> Tom Scott getting in the centre now. Towards Bruce Sherping, and that's a mongrel of a kick, and it's gone out of bounds. Bruce Sherpick, normally a very good kicker of the ball. That one a uh, bit of an exception to the rule. Boundary throw in there. You see Bealy in the ruck. He takes control of the ball, gets it as far as baby Brad Brown. He's got no one to kick it to. Pissy offers a lead from the middle. Goes to ground. Sherpick got the ball. Over there now to Peter Adams. He's his left foot shot for goal. And that's carried through. And that's gone for third goal of the ball. Crossing now to the Bennett uh, Hardware scoreboard. We see Kenwick one goal, three, nine. To uh, Kelm's got three Green goals, one. Green Valiant XCM 564. Three goals straight, 18. XCM 564 for Division Cartway. Well, the uh, 
the centre line's going to have to get a bit more, uh, give a bit, offer a bit more in the way of leads. So this back line's winning the ball out, but they've got no one to kick it to. Well, that's a bad bounce favouring the Calms got into the ground, taken by Daryl Harris in the ruck. Bad bounce doesn't favour Oggy, picked up by Kelmscott, goes in board, Bomber, he gets it over the side bottom, he's flattened after the kick, it's come back though, and I think it's gone through for a goal, it's either going to be a goal or he's going to get another kick, must have gone through for a point. Yes, well, I thought they went through for a goal, Lou, but it's obviously gone through for a point it's because you give him another kick. It's hard to tell from this angle, uh, Rich. Yeah, uh, Serge. Serge, Lou? Serge. Serge. This is uh, Kim's side bottom for Kelm Scott. He'd be about uh, only 25 metres out on a, about a 60 degree angle. That's a nice looking kick coming back. That's through the middle, and that's... Uh, that's six points. That takes Kellum's got the four goals straight, 24. Let me have a fag, Kevin. Waiting for the ball to come back. Umpire John Nicholas to bounce the ball. Daryl Harris in the ruck for Kenwick. That's a good 25 metre knock. <coughs> Picked up by Trippo. Gets the boot to ball, looking for Ashy. He's coming from behind. And Colm's got win that one from in front. He's taking a fine mark. That's Mel Hancock for Colm Scott. He, he gets the ball over to God knows who. <coughs> Colm Scott got the ball in possession now out on that. Outside scoreboard win. Uh, Kenwick at the moment, I'd say. Yeah, well, they're playing run on football and they're playing from in front, and I think that's why they're uh, winning the ball at this stage. There goes Phil Timmons backing up nicely, shrugs off the tackle, gets left, boot the ball, finds Watto, who takes a saving diving mark there in the half back, half back line. He looks for McCormack. In goes the Kelms that play heavily. Livo goes in, Watto backs up. There goes the kick looking for Trippo. Trippo takes a mark. And he can probably score off there. Plays on. Puts on the left boot. That's going to go close, but doesn't come back and go through for a minor score. Ken, we could be using the ball a bit better into uh, attack at this stage, I feel. <coughs> that takes the score to one goal, four, ten. To kellum has got four goals, 24. kellum has got to get the ball out on that wing. Spins around, goes in the middle of the ground and finds Peter Adams. Left foot kick, looking for Witty. Closely checked by Oggy. Oggy's given away the free kick here. I didn't see that one, it must have been for a higher tackle. Over the shoulder. Oggy only had his eyes on the ball though. There goes the wit kick. Up goes Timmermans. Barry Nicholas backing up for Kenwick. He's uh, closely checked by Ricky Uckman. Through comes Franklin, that's great play. He looks for Alan Boundary out on the wing. Boundary from behind, can't take it. Jago's got the ball now. He's tackled, pulled off the ball, taps it as far as Boundary. He uh, gets a heavy tackle and another one. Picked up by Kelmscott. Kelmscott doing as they like at the moment. Gets it over Lindsay Kell, into the middle, finds Sherpy. <coughs> Sherpy gets the ball over to Doug Beatty. He looks for Bomber. Bomber can't take a juggling mark. Tackled by, uh, I'll tell you what, side he's had a shot. And that's drifted across the face of goals and goes through for a minor score. Well, Phil Timmons is going in hard over there. Centre line players in Kimwick uh, a bit nervous at this stage, I'd say. That's the only excuse I can make for him. <coughs> Long kick, looking for Watto. He'll get a free kick. Looks for Pissy in the middle of the ground. Well spoiled. Libo goes in hard. In goes Pissy. Side steps, gets the kick in. And there goes Alan Boundary now. He's got possession. 
spins around, handball, over to McCormack, cleverly done to Jago, but he's caught, back to McCormack, McCormack lines up and puts it through for a major score. Yes, that's a goal to Kimmel. Well done, he just got that one. McCormack got the ball to Jago. Jago had to give it back to McCormack, he had nowhere else to go. <coughs> McCormack uh, had the goods and put it through for a major. So that's the second goal on the board for Kimmick. They're now two goals, four, 16 to kelm has got four goals, 125. Nine points of difference. Well, that could be the goal that Kimmick needs to get back into this game. Still only early in the game. <coughs> Harris wins a tap, in goes Livo, gets it over to Watto. Dave Watterson, good 50 metre kick, looking for Ashy, off the back of the pack. And uh, that's taken by Craig Bridey and kicked out of bounds on the full. Peter Ashworth to take the kick now for Kimwick on the right full forward pocket. He's got a good boot. I don't know if he can get this one, though. That's a very difficult angle getting him from that pocket out there. He's got the wind against him. Goes long and high. The distance is there, but not the accuracy. Pack goes up. Jago can't take the mark. I think that's through for the minor score to Kenwick. Yeah. Oh, huh, huh. Uh, yeah, at yeah, the back of the changes or something. That's Craig Bridey uh, clearing for Kelmscott. Only as far as Dennis Frank, uh, Jeff Franklin, sorry, he takes a fine mark. He's come a long way down from his half-back flank to take that one. Please make your way to the ambulance, thank you. Sophie of No, it wasn't. I think it was Brad Brown to that mark. ambulance, thank you. <coughs> Kimmick with the ball now in the full four where Peter Ashworth takes a strong mark. He's about 25 metres out, almost directly in front, and won't have any trouble putting this one through. This will be Kenwick's third goal on the board if he can get it. And we'll take the difference to just two points favouring Kelmscott. There goes the kick. Nice drop punt. Umpire doesn't move. And that's through for a major. <laughs> Waiting for the ball to come back from the crowd. <laughs> Well, it's been fairly even up to this stage, Lou. What do you think, think about the game so far? Yeah, it's been a good, tough battle. Uh, just hope Kenwick can pull it off now. They want to get a bit <laughs> more in front from, uh, from here. Umpire John Nicholas bounces the ball. Up goes uh, Daryl well, Harris. Yes, he's John mounting Harris. well. Through to Pissy, he gets boot the ball. Yeah, Only as far as Remo Vacker for John Scott. Yes, Remo Vacker, that's me. Kicks over there, Trippo goes up from behind. Almost marked by Glenn Smith. Through to Whitty. Whitty's dealt with by Pissy after the kick. Umpire Zanich having a word to say, and he's going to give the kick to Whitty. Or is he playing it up the ground? Yes, he is. Kim side bottom with a kick. It was a Timmy who hit him, was it? It's Timmy off. <laughs> We've just heard some bad news for Kenwick. Uh, Timmy Costa, who left the ground early, has got a broken arm. I think he's going to hospital in an ambulance. There we see Timmy Costa walking away from the ground. He looks like he's going home. He won't take any further part in this game. He's got his right arm in a sling there, and I'd say he's broken it for sure. Oh, that's a sad blow for Tim and a sad blow for Kenwick. <laughs> Timmy Costley going off the scene, uh, I think. Neil McCormack come on. So Neil McCormack will be playing the centre half forward. <coughs> Tom's got to take the mark. Wayne, I'm not happy with that decision. Come here, Dale. 
That's Ray with the ball. He's about on a 45 degree angle and he's about 40 metres out. Alexa Torpedo spiral punt kick to long kick. Hasn't got the distance or the accuracy. Off the front of the pack. No one can get the ball out. And up by John Nicholas says, I'll take him out. <laughs> well, that is sad news. Uh, Timmy Crossy not having a bigger bearing on this game than he did. Trippo's in there fighting for the ball. But the boundary line beats them both and there'll be a boundary throwing. Billy takes the ball. Can't get it clear. Umpire's found a free kick. That'll go the way of Kenwick dropping the ball. <laughs> Barry Nicholas with the ball. Gets a 15 metre penalty awarded to him. He's got Leeds offering up the ground from Bravey Brad Brown who takes the mark. He looks for Jago. Arthur Jago with the ball there on the scoreboard wing. Goes inboard looking for Trippo. Trippo takes the mark. He's got a lead offering from Nico. That's the way the ball goes. No. Alan Boundary there takes a beautiful chest mark. Well shepherded by McCormack. Spins around. Gets out of trouble. But the kick's blocked off by Lindsay Kell for Kelmscott who takes the ball. Gets the handball. Over to the Kelm, has got Wingman over there, spins around, kicks back in towards the centre, towards Nick over, finds Watto, who takes a good mark. He's got uh, the lead there from Neil McCormack, that's the way the ball goes. Neil McCormack, he's about 50 metres out, there goes the lead from Ashworth. <laughs> and there goes the siren in the first quarter of this grand final. Then we take the scoreboard, we see Kelmscott with a two-point lead at this stage. Kenwick three goals, 5.23, to Kelmscott four goals, 1.25. A very even quarter. Uh, Kelmscott dominating the first uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Kenwick kicking back. Kelmscott had a greater percentage of the play, though, I thought, Lou. Yes, this is correct. Um, I'm sure Nick will have a few words to say to some of the boys out there. I'm sure he will. I'm sure a lot of them will have to lift their game. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Some of them are going in half-heartedly. We've got a half a dozen tries out there, but uh, some of them are going to flip the game and get a bit more inspired. Anyway, we'll be back to see the rest of this game in a few shakes. Set for the start now of the second quarter of the grand final here between uh, Kenwick and Kelmscott. We see the scoreboard, uh, Kelm's got two points in front at the first change. We look at the flag over there, the flag's dead still. That means there's no breeze blowing, so uh, neither end favouring either side. The breeze won't be a dominant factor in this game, it's up to the players. There goes the bounce from umpire John Nicholas Rhodes, he flies high, wins a tap. Picked up by Jago, he gets it to Watto. Watto gets beat to ball. But Kelm's got there in defence. Oh, he drops what he should have taken. <coughs> Kick there by uh, Lindsay Kell out to the scoreboard wing. Mark taken by number 14 of Kelm Scott, and that's Bruce Stevenson. He plays on, gets the handball over the Kelm Scott player. And he's found Ray Wood out there in the right full forward pocket. Woody just a bit too fast then for Daryl Harris getting away from him. Hey, he's on a a cute angle out there, but only about 30 metres out. There goes the kick. Has it been touched on the line? No, it's through for a goal. Sorry. That's Kelm Scott's fifth goal, and they go to an eight-point lead now. That was a great kick by Woody. He's on the wrong side for a right foot and still stand it through for all six points. Umpires managed to bounce the ball. Dave Rhodes in the way for Kenwick. Hits it back to Chris Uckman. In goes Wayne Ogg. He's heavily met by uh, Bruce Stevenson. Alan Boundary with the ball now for Kenwick. Gets the left foot kick in looking for Trippo. Scrambly play out there. 
Neil McCormick goes in but can't keep the ball in play. And that's out of bounds on the left half forward flank for the Kenwick. At the Kenwick end of the ground. It's going to be, no, it's not a bounding throw. That's out on the full. Ball to be taken by, I think that's Lindsay Cal out there. He goes in board. Looking for and finding Peter Adams at Kelm Scott. Men, uh, Scott. Yeah, they're doing that with ease at this stage. Uh, Kenwick players not checking them as well as they should. That's met by Dave Rhodes. In goes Livo. He's had a few possessions. Gets it over to Alan Boundary. He looks short. Well, Kenwick are piss farting around with the ball. They're going for the short kick instead of kicking it long. Watto picks it up and does just that. Kicks long. And there's Kelm Scott coming through in defence. Glenn Smith gets it over to his teammate. He's disposed of. Kelm's got to get the ball out now. Looking for Woody. That's a better punch by uh, Day, uh, by Harris. Harris knocks it to Wishy. He's picked it up. Looking for Ashley, and that's a great kick, great lead. And uh, <coughs> I think he's a bit far out there to score. Bealey's calling for it long in the square. There's no one on him. Ashley taking his time with the kick. He's on a very acute angle, but he's, he's about 40 yards out from goal. It's not beyond him. Good kicker of the ball. That one's got the distance, but not the accuracy. He lands in the square. Stacks on the mill. And umpires then it will take the bounce. Just outside the uh, goal square at the Kenwick end of the ground. There goes the bounce. Kevin Beale in it for Kenwick. Levo goes in. So does Trippo. Trippo with the ball. Spins around. Shepherd it off, gets the boot in. That's through for a minor score to Kenwick. <laughs> there goes the kick in from Calm Scott. Player plays on. Drives the ball up onto the scoreboard wing. Alan Boundary for Kenwick goes from behind. Can't take the mark. He gets a push in the back. And umpire's Zanich has seen it and given the free kick the way of Alan Boundary of Kenwick. Boundary with the ball. Goes these short inboard kicks. This is, we need long kicks in the middle of the ground. But anyway, he's found Pissy and Pissy looks for Nico and finds him on the chest. Colin Wishart drops back into the rifle forward pocket. Nico sees him. That's the way the ball goes. And Wishart takes a good mark. Too far out to score. Goes inboard. Looking for Trippo. That's dangerous. Picked up by Lindsay Kell. He gets boot to ball. Out towards that wing again. Oggy can't take the mark. Alan Boundary not having a good day. The Kelmscott kick goes out there to Witt. Witt gets beat, the ball drives it back in the middle. Phil Timmins in front, that's the way to play and he gets the free kick. Well done Phil Timmins. There's a bit of a box on over there on the right half forward flank. I can't see that's between. Wayne Ogg's in there. Phil Timmins runs over to lend a hand. Timmermans with the ball now, goes in board, looking for Trippo, he can't get there, Baby Brad Brown picks it up, goes through Cooley, kick goes off the side of the boot, Baby's Kelm spot, taken by Sherpy, he gets the handball, as far as Glenn Smith, spins out of trouble, does it easily, looks for Witty, that wasn't 10 yards, the umpires paid the mark anyway. You getting it? You getting it, Peter? You getting it, That's uh, Jack there, Ray Witt with the ball. These type of shots are pretty easy for Witty. You can put it in from there, no worries. It's only about 20 yards out from goal on a slight angle. Lines up. Umpire moves. But that's true for a goal. Yeah. If you uh, talk and move, Goes and we cross to the Bennett Hardware scoreboard now. We see Kenwick three goals, six twenty-four, trailing Calm Scott, six goals, one thirty-one, six goals, one thirty-seven. Well, Kenwick started out slow in the second quarter. Only two points down in the first change. They haven't fired a shot yet. Jago with the ball now, gets the left boot to ball. Out towards Livingston, he's in front. Doesn't get a good bounce. 
Over there's Alan Boundary lending a hand, but the boundary line beats them both, and it's out of bounds on the left half forward flank for the Kenwick side. <coughs> boundary throw in. One by Rhodes, only as far as Kelmscott. Jago applies the tackle, but the Kelmscott player gets away. Over to Bruce Stevenson. He gets boot to ball. Kenwick go up through uh, Batson Nicholas, and he comes down with the ball. Looking for Wishart in the centre of the ground. In goes number four, that's Butcher for Kelmscott. He gets the ball across to his teammate. He kicks long. That's through for a goal to Kelmscott, too. Well, Kelmscott have got the run on football going, and they've just put their seventh goal on the board. And this spells trouble for Kenwick. Well, can we just start playing in front at the moment? It's going to cost them the game if they don't lift their game now. Kevin Beal with the ball now for Kenwick. Goes short looking for Watto, that's dangerous. Watto drops a mark. Kenwick piss fighting around with it. Calm Scott pick it up. Get the handball over. Well done by Trippo. Hoggy Shepherds off. Oh, there's a box on there. In goes Bazza Nicholas. He's not shy to throw a punch. Well, Sherpig there had a word to say to Hoggy, so Bazza Nicholas comes straight in. And he's not going to let his players be dominated in that fashion. Umpires move in and they've settled it down now. Meanwhile, the ball over there on the scoreboard wing. And the umpire's going to bounce it up. And I believe I've got Joe Isaiah alongside me now, uh, one of the performers for Kenwick and the Colts. I will ask him to have a few words in a moment. Jay's our uh, special clean eat guest, hot seat guest for the day, and I'm sure he'll have plenty to say at half time. Jay was uh, fortunate to play in the Colts Grand Final, which was a draw. 81 points apiece, so they'll be playing here again next week. There goes the kick from Barry Nicholas into the centre of the ground. Billy can't take the mark. Gets the ball out, handballs as far as Wada. He plays on as a bounce. Drives long, looking for Ashy. But in front's Kelmscott. He gets held without the ball and will take a free kick. <coughs> Kelmscott with the ball, the right fullback pocket. Looks into the centre of the ground. That's a good 30, 40 metre drop punt. Up goes Bill from Kenwick. He can't mark. Crumbs taken by Colin Tingley. He goes out in that scoreboard wing, but the boundary line beats them both and is out for a boundary throwing. Free kick here. We'll go the way of Kellen Scott. Plays on. Tackled from behind. Dropping the ball. That's pissy with the tackle. He gets the free kick. Drives the ball long into attack, and that's the way Kenwick should go, straight down the middle of the ground. In goes Wishart for Kenwick. Can't pick the ball up. He gets a push in the back. No, the umpire's paid, dropping the ball. Now, I don't know where he's got that decision from. He's made the Lindsay Cole go back to the kick. That was a shit house decision. He has two players on him, got the push in the back, never had control of the ball, and Zanich has given the kick to Calm Scott. This is Zanich. I can't understand him. Obviously, he hasn't been circumcised, because there's no end to the prick. <laughs> In goes Butcher for Kelmscott. He can't take the ball. Franklin goes through with a high tackle but misses. 13 for Kelmscott. Gets the ball over. Only as far as number 13 from Kenwick and that's Watto. Watto doesn't waste any time. He drives the ball out into the wing here. <coughs> Jay goes let uh, Peter Adams come in and take this mark. Kelmscott playing in front. Getting first to the ball. There goes a short pass. Only as far as baby Brad Brown. There goes the kick to Arthur Jago. He takes the mark. Um, Phil Timmons come a long way up the ground, chasing a kick. There goes the ball to Neil McCormack. Up there, Rosie. Rosie takes a fine chest mark. 
He's about 40 yards out. Slide angle. I don't think you can kick that. You can so. We just had great words of wisdom from Joe. He reckons you can put that through without any trouble. Well, I hope he's right because uh, Kimwick desperately needs a goal at this stage of the second quarter. There goes the kick from Dave Rhodes. Hasn't got the distance. Someone gets a push in the back down there. That's Ashy. Out to uh, Ricky Uckman from Kelmscott. He gets the handball as far as uh, Sherpy. Ricky Uckman in there again. He's got the ball. Livo gives chase. Tries to smother, but not effective. AB's got the ball now. Infield gets the kick in. Looking for Rosie. He's up. He takes a fine mark. Now, we just had words from Joe. He's let me down once. But this time, he reckons it's three for a major. Kenwick needing the six points on the board. Looks like someone coming off here. Dave Rimwell going on. Trippo coming yes, off. Yes, Trippo's coming off. Now, that's a surprise. Phil Thomas, the runner, has gone out. He's bringing off Trippo, and Ray Greenwell is going to go on to do the duty as a rover. There goes the kick from Rosie. That's three for six points. The umpire weighs the flag, and Kenwick now go to four goals, six. 30. Trailing Tom Scott, seven goals, one, 43. So there's 13 points in it at the moment. Well, Ray Greenwell, he'll take every opportunity of this, and I'm sure we uh, can look for a big game from him. Trippo pretty quiet so far in this game. Ian Livingston playing well as a rover. He's going in. There goes the bounce. Won by Kelm Scott. Only as far as Ray Greenwell gets his first kick for the game. In goes Dave Rhodes. He's bundled out by Lindsay Kell. Wishard goes in for Kenwick. There's uh, Neil McCormack, but the boundary line beats them all. So the ball out of bounds there for a boundary throw in. On the right half forward flank, the Kenwick end of the ground. Dave Rhodes caught one, but uh, he didn't go down. He got up in true Kenwick fashion and get on with the game. Up he goes for the ruck, wins the knock as far as Jago. Jago gets boot the ball. That's a great kick from Arthur Jago. Make no mistake about that. And the Kenwick first and best player kicks a goal for his side, and I think that'll lift the team. Yes, he's got that goal right at the stage where they need one. It's uh, taken there now to five goals, six. 36 to Callum Scott, seven goals, 143, and there's now only a goal and a point in it. Well, that was a great shot from Jago. From a difficult angle, he steered it through for a major. Umpire is to bounce the ball now. About 15 minutes gone in this second quarter. It's a high bounce of the ball. Bealy reads it well. Knocked it as far as Nico. He can't take it cleanly. Picked up by Callum Scott. Sinks on the left boot. Over in this swing, there's Butcher for Kelmscott. Roll tackled by Wishart. <coughs> he goes into the ball, but the ball's out of bounds. We'll have a boundary throw in right down in front of us here in the commentary box. Well, Lou, uh, the game's picked up the tempo a bit. Yes, it looks like Kenwick are fighting back now. Uh, the words of wisdom of Graham Nicholas must have got him going. I've just picked up some tall timber in the spectators here. Jeff Fry and uh, Ron Pensini. There goes the knockout, taken by Brad Brown. Gets it as far as Skipper Nicholas. He spins around, gets the right boot to ball. Looking for Rhodesy. He goes up, but nowhere near the ball. Lindsay Cowell backs up. Goes the man and not the ball, and the ball goes over. Jago's having a few words to say to him. Jago and Lindsay Cowell known to be best of friends. There goes the boundary throw in. Dave Rhodes contests it for Kenwick. Pissy can't take the ball. Kelm's got spin out of trouble. There goes the left foot kick, and Butcher takes the ball for Kelm Scott. Brad Brown oversteps the mark, and umpire Zanich will bring him back for a 15. Butcher's played on. He gets the handball over to Craig Bridie. He kicks long looking for Witt. Witt takes the chest mark in front of Daryl Harris. Woody's a mile and a half out. He can't score from there. There goes the short kick, and that's taken by Bruce Sherpy for Kelm Scott. He's only about 40 yards out, directly in front. Super boot. He could put this through. Waiting on the kick now from Sherpy. <laughs> Off the side of the boot. Players contested in the square. Knocked through for a point. If Phil Timmons to take the kick out for Kevin. Mark Rowley having a very quiet game. He hasn't got a goal yet. Phil Timmons closely checking him. There goes the kick from Timmons. It's a good long drop punt. Looking for Bealy. Bealy takes a strong mark in front of the pack. 
plays on. Gets it over to Watto. Watto has three or four bounces down that uh, scoreboard wing. Left foot kick's not a good one. Looking for Livo. Off the back of the pack goes uh, McCormack, but the boundary line beats them both. Central boundary showing there on the left half forward flank for the Kenwood side. There's the throw in. Cormac goes in for Kenwick. Gets it as far as Lido. Ball's on the ground. Stacks on the mill. Comes out now. That's Greenwell for Kenwick. Drives it in. Finds Jago. He takes a chest mark. Now Pice play to push in the back. Jago with the ball. He's about 30 yards out. Difficult angle, but the right side for a right footer. He'll have a shot at ball. There goes the Jago kick. Not quite making the distance. Up goes Ashy, he can't take the ball. Rose is in there, tries to soccer a goal. Off hands, now five pulls it through for a point. Pull back to Collins, got to take the kick now. <coughs> Gets the kick there. They have the dub speed in the right back for Collins, but he's got the ball in the right full back pocket. Nothing much offering up the ground. Drives it long, Nick goes in there, so is Remo Becker. Neither get the ball. Bealy goes in. He's bundled over. Greeny goes in like a true rover. Gets the ball out. Gets a push in the back. Not giving the free kick. So Bealy wins the ball. And that goes down here looking for Ashley. Off the pack. Jay goes in there. He's got the ball. Spins out of trouble. And that's a great goal out of Jay. Top decoration for Paul. Ray Greenwell has done well since he came on. Yeah, Ray Greenwell has done well. He's only been on five minutes. He's, he's come off. He's just done a great passage of play, he got the ball out, contributed that goal. But he's fired up now and he'll show you a lot off when he comes back on later in the game. Here's a score on the board on the Bennett Hardware scoreboard. Kenwick, six goals, seven, 43 to seven, what is it, seven, two, what is it? 45. 45. Two points of difference. Very good, Matt. Yeah, we'll leave the arithmetic to me, Rock, and you keep the filming going. Okay, Lee. You're not bad at that. Well, Kenwick fighting back again in the later stage of this second quarter, and we've got a close game on our hands once again. <coughs> Kelm has got clear the ball away from the centre. There goes the kick. Who's there for Kenwick? Baby Brad Brown, cool in defence. Takes a fine mark. He comes out to the wing here looking for, looking for Jago. Jago calls. Gets a push in the back. Gets rubbed into the ground. Thank you very much, Ms. Jago. I'll take the kick. And if you want to see me after the game, I'll be in that as well. Jago is the awesome. ball now. He plays on. There's no one on the mark. Goes the long kick. That's a great torpedo spiral punt kick from Jago. He's really lifted his game. Livo can't take the mark, but he gets a push in the back with a high tackle. And he's going to take the free kick. He's only about 20 yards out from goal. Slight angle. And I think Livo will put this through. Well, Jago's really lifted his game. And uh, he's the fairest and best player for Kenwick. Is really an inspiration to his side. There's Lido number 11 having a shot. That's a good kick. Make no mistake about that. That's through for a major. Ian Livingston kicks the goal to put Kenwick in front. 7-7 seven, seven now, Kenwick 40. What's that? 49. Two Colm's got 7-2-44. And uh, Kenwick hit the front for the first uh, stage of this game. Well, Kenwick can go on with it here if they keep playing like they are now. They've got the running football going. Players are starting to look for each other in the forward line. The centre line's contributing a bit more. We've got Wishart's lifted his game. Getting drive through Jago. There goes the bounce anyway. Bealy takes possession. Gets it over to Watto. He's tried hard all day. Glenn Smith gets a kick in for Calm Scott. And Ray Witt takes the mark there. Closely checked by Daryl Harris. Woody's about 40 yards out. He's going to go long. There goes the kick, drop, punt. A lot of shepherding going on in the square. Umpire doesn't move, and that's through for a goal. So, Colmstock, steal the lead back. They got eight goals, 250. Leading one point in front of Kenwick, 7-7-49. Well, that was a quick answer to the Kenwick goal. But it's a close game as we expected. Set a bounce down now. All the Kelm's got Ruckman winning that knock, but only as far as Watto. Watto with a 60 metre spiral drop punt. 
Great kick. Livo's in there. Knocks it out to Rogie. He paddles it back to Ashley. Ashley socks off the ground and then gets a goal. What a great goal for Cleo Ashley. That's the Swan Gold goal of the day for sure. Great soccer goal from Ashley. Set up there by Rosie. Livo was in there lending a hand. Ashley finished off with the goods and that put six points on the board for Kenwick and they're back in front. I'd say it was trained, uh, trained by Palais uh, after that kick. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely a soccer goal, that one. Yeah. Oh, so I thought I had a lot of vintage Mark Jackson in it myself. Now she's happy with that, and that goal could lift the Kenwick side. Yeah, Rock, you quit the funny. Yeah. Well, that's the side of this one goal, goal of the day, that's for sure. Now, can Rhodesy pull off the mark of the day? Yes. He Up told me before the in. game, Lou, that he was going to pull off a screamer for me. Just for the camera. He dropped one in the first quarter. There goes the kill, has got kick. Whitty's up, Phil Timmons backing up for Kenwick. He goes in hard, gutsy football, Phil Timmons, take your kick. He's played a good game so far, Timmons. He looks long for Jago. Jago doesn't let him down and takes a fine mark at the back of the pack. Well, Kenwick have really lifted three guys like Jago. He finds Wishart out here on the wing. Wishart sees him a callback, he draws that lead. Ashy's offering something, there goes Rosie. Wishy elects to kick it to Ashy, sorry. He can't take the ball, and the boundary line beats him over. <coughs> boundary throw in now on the wire half forward flank for Kenwick. Knock run by Rosie. In goes Nico. Umpires and it's his old take it As we see, Jeff Franklin's come off. He doesn't look too fit. And Ray Greenwell's gone back on the ground. We used to go cameras here on Franklin. Trainers in, he's in the trainer's arm, he's limping, and I don't think he'll take any further part in this game. So Kenwick lost two good players now in Crossley and Franklin, and we've what got what all, tw all players in the ground. Really? And we've got Neil McCormack and Ray Grimmel both on the ground now for half time. Dicko goes in, he's got to take on about five players. Down Pies found a kick and will go the way of Sidey for Colmstock. He gets the short kick into Doug Beattie. Beattie kicks into the middle of the ground. Watto's there. Now played by Peter Adams who takes the mark. Peter Adams kicks long now. Ray Greenwell's there. Backed up by Phil Timmons. He takes the ball. He's tackled. Greenwell gets up, recovers well. He's got Brad Brown there if he wants him. But sees Jago. Jago out of the wing takes a fine mark. <laughs> gets the left foot kick over to Watto. Watto gets a high tackle, umpire calls play on. Kissy Uckin picks it up, cuts the ball on his arm, goes for a run. Kicks the ball in the centre of the ground, there's Alan Boundary. He's got three players to beat, gets the ball out to Neil McCormack. Left foot kick on the half forward flank looking for Ashworth. Ashworth can't take that mark, gets a push in the back, umpire calls play on. Recovers, picks it up. Looks, looks long, left foot kick into the pocket. Looking for Livo. Trippo, he can't take the mark, recovers well, picks up. This is going to be a certain goal to kill him. Runs in, hang on, he's looked for Wish, and Wish takes a fine mark. Well, Lip, Trippo was on the wrong side for the left foot of them. Probably couldn't have got up in that pocket, so he's looked for Wish. Wish looks for Gonzo, and he's, he's decreased the angle, but the distance will still be about the same. <laughs> Wish is a good kick of the ball. He could have kicked that himself, he's given it to uh, Graham Nicholas. Graham on a better angle. I think that was a case of kick it to Nico and we'll have a rest on the bench. <laughs> there goes the kick from Nico. You can put the grass down, so that's the Yeah, they definitely lifted the block, uh, Well, we've passed now to the Bennett Hardware scoreboard. So you see Kenwick 9 7, leading Kelmscott 8 goals to 50. Kenwick now 11 points in front. Let's hope they stay that way. Graham Nicholas, a goal from Graham Nicholas will lift the side too. <coughs> the centre line players like Wishart and Boundary starting to contribute. Watto also from Kimwick lifted their game and that makes them, that's making a big difference at the moment. In goes Pissiak, left foot kick, finds Neil McCormack on the chest. He's got Levo running past. But they've got the tall timber down there in front of goals. That's the way the kick goes. Looking for Nico. Joe Nicholas flies high, can't take the mark. In goes Lindsay Cole from Kelmscott. 
There's Jago fighting hard on the bottom of the pack. It's Gets it over the roads, he each tackle, ball comes back to Lindsay Cal. Jago gets goes in, gets his head rid off, and the kick goes the way of Lindsay Cal. I can't understand that decision. How did he get that? I won't have a word to John Nicholas about that one. And there's uh, Andy Grant from Colm Scott taking the mark. He goes, a great kick, that's going to hit us up here in the commentary box. That's right out of bounds in the pool. Brad Brown to take the kick in for Kenwick. Got Lee's offering from Graham Nicholas. He takes the mark. Brad Bowen runs past. He wants the ball. Nick has got him there if he wants him. There goes Ashy. Trippo can't take the ball. Side he goes in. Gets the handball out to Kel. Kel with a long spiral kick out on the scoreboard wing. There's Wayne off to Kenwick. He's had a quiet day so far. Backing up. And there's Dale Harris fighting back in defence and takes a saving mark. He goes the pass, looking for Livo. He can't take the mark. In goes Baza Nicholas. Baynog gets the kick out on that wing. Trippo loses side of the ball, picked up by Calm Scott, kicking it back. Boundary doesn't read the ball well. In goes Livo. He's fighting hard. There goes the handball. That's good play to Barry Nicholas. Shrugs off a tackle and drives Kenwick into attack. But only as far as a Kelm Scott player out there on the school board wing. Well, Kenwick can't afford to have any more injuries. They've got all their players on the ground. There goes the kick. Once again, Dale will find Dale Harris marking on the half back flank for Kenwick. There goes the kick into the centre of the ground looking for skipper Graham Nicholas. He can't take it. In goes Greeny fighting hard. Long handball by Kelm Scott. Doug Beattie on that occasion, spearing the pass into Mark Riley. Mark Riley taking a mark in front of Phil Timmons. Well, this will be Riley's first goal if he gets it. He hasn't got one yet. It wasn't in front of Phil Timmons either. It was only a chap on the mark there. Oh, Darrell Harris, sorry. One of the very few mistakes Darrell has made. There goes the kick from Riley. He doesn't make any mistake with his first opportunity. And that's the first goal on the board to Mark Riley and the ninth goal to Kelmstock. Ten weeks still in front. Nine goals, seven to nine goals, two. That's a five point advantage. Siren set to go in the second quarter here. Gosnell's over. At about the 25 minute mark of the second quarter. A couple of quick goals now would really. Uh, Put Kenwick in with a show. There goes the centre bounce down from Zanich. Knock favours Kelm Scott. Goes to Jago, he's tackled. Holding the ball, say the crowd. The umpire says play on. Livo goes in hard, as does Pissy. That's Ricky up in there for Kelm Scott. He gets the ball out to Colin Tingley. He drives him into attack. Beatty goes in. He's dealt with by Greeny. Hoggy can't pick it up. Kelm's got player playing for a free kick. But uh, that good kick's going to go the way of Barry Nicholas. That is good, good decision. decision. Yes, I think the Kelm's got player was foxing for the free kick. Then the umpire was awake to it. Barry Nicholas appealed for the free kick and gets the kick by holding the ball. Dropping the ball. Arthur J going in possession. He uh, finds Watto out on the grandstand wing. He kicks long, looking for Nico. Wish out at the back of the pack. Reads the play well, takes the mark in front of the pack. Left foot kick, looking for Ashworth. He's from behind, can't take the mark. Now Pye's going to pay a free kick to Mel Hancock for Comstock. I couldn't see that one either. There goes a kick from Comstock. AB up for Kenwick. Lord. Drops a difficult one from behind. Umpire calls plays on, stack on the mill, and he's going to bounce the ball. I don't think Alan Boundary's quite got over the nerves in this game yet. He's uh, had a go for a few marks and he hasn't pulled any down yet. He's coming from behind though, that makes a big difference. He gets this however, and there goes the kick. Uh, and that's half time at the South Suburban Murray National Football League Grand Final here at Gosnells. We cross to the Bennett Hardware scoreboard. We see Kenwick, 9 goals, 7 
61. Leading Kelp's got nine goals to 55 by five points at the half-time change. Well, we'll cross now to uh, Joe Isaiah. He's our clean heat uh, guest, hot seat guest for the day, and I'm sure he's going to have a few words to say after playing in the Colts grand final. Joe, words of wisdom, please. Uh, who, who would be, Joe, who, who, would be, uh, who would get your vote so far for uh, best on the ground for, in that half for Kimberley? Uh, for Kimberley. Well, I think Joe's had enough to say, so we'll get back to the commentary now. He's always been a man of few words. Uh, no, well, I, I think I think Kimberley can have come back well in the second quarter, and uh, if they can continue on with this uh, this play, they'll they'll give uh, Kelm's got a big shake. And uh, I think the third quarter will definitely be the decider. Yeah, but that's got nothing to do with it. Joe, I asked you who was the best player. The best player, well, the best players for Kenwick to date. Chris Uckman is, uh, has Chris proved Uckman well. Chris Uckman is playing well, yes. Uh, Dave Watterson has done a good well, job. Still in positions. Livo's trying hard. Livo is still in good positions. to Jago. Jago's going in hard. He's been in everything. He's kicked a couple of goals. Well, you're He's kicked vital goals. He's the club's first and best player. And I reckon the vote should go to Jake so far. Well, chaps, I'm sorry. We'll have to leave it there as we go to a commercial break and back to the studio. Okay. Thanks very much, There goes a siren for the start of the second half of the grand final here. At the half time change, we see Tom's got a leading by five points. There goes a siren, umpire John Nichols to bounce the ball. Kelm's got win the knock, taken by Watto. Yeah. He gets it over to Jake, tackled heavily by Kelm Scott. Through comes Craig Bridey for Kelm Scott. Gets a kick towards Daryl Harris, he doesn't really bounce the ball. Ricky Uckman gets a fresh air handball in. Back to Dale Harris. Left foot kick, looking for Jago and finds that player in the middle of the ground. Spins around, gets a left foot kick, looking for Nico. Tapped on. Here McCormack out down the left half back flank, doesn't read the bounce. Gets it over to Triplet. Tripper has a shot. Looking for Rosie, he can't take the mark. In goes Ashy, applies a tackle. Colm's got clear it now on the half back flank. Down here looking for Bazza Nicholas. There's Barry Nicholas sporting the headband. He gets the handball out. Only as far as Bruce Stevenson from Colm Scott. Looks long down towards Ray Witt. He's got the ball now. Looking in towards Mark Riley. Fortuman's checking him closely in front. Hoggy picks up the crumbs, gets the handball out. Finds Bailey. Holds that tickles. Gets it over to. Barry Nicholas, he gives it to Watto, puts on the left boot, drives it long into attack, up to Livo, he can't take the mark. And the boundary line's going to beat them both. Oh, well, and boundary gets a push in the back, umpires and he doesn't see it, and the ball's going to be a boundary throw in on the left full forward pocket for Kenley. Have a go. Have a go. Have a go. Have a go. We've got Sue with us here and Tracy, they're our uh, clean heat guests. Guess, and they're going to have a few words to say in a minute. Gets it over to Trippo now. Jago's talking to him. He takes it, gets the handball over to Trip. Trip with a right foot kick, wrong footed. Only as far as Calm Scott, who takes a fine mark. Who's that? Takes a fine mark in the defence. Gets the ball out now to Remo Vacker. He's dispossessed by Wish. Over to Trippo. Wrong footed again. Drives it in towards goal. Touched on the line, and that's through from behind. Oh, Tracy wants to know how you're going, jerk off. Uh, Kelm has got kick out now. There's Alan Boundary. He goes up and takes a fine chest mark. Great mark, Alan Boundary. And that's a strong contender for the Swan Gold mark of the day. There goes the kick from Alan Boundary. Looking for Watto. Finds that player on the chest. He's gone backwards 20 metres here. That's negative play. Watto with a better kick though. That's a good 65 metre spiral punt kick. I think it's gone out of bounds on the full way. No, there's going to be a boundary throw in and left and forward pocket for Kim Wick. Can only imagine. 
There's the throw in now. In goes Graham Nicholas. Picked up by McCormack. He gets the kick in. Rhodes, you can't take the ball cleanly. <laughs> Strong tackle by Trippo. Back to Trippo. Lines up. Left foot kick. Looks good from here. Umpire doesn't move. And that's through for a major. Another six points on the board for Kenwick. We cross now the Bennett Hardware scoreboard. We see Kenwick nine goals, eight. Sorry, ten goals, eight, sixty-eight. Leading Combs got nine goals, two, fifty-six. Well, that's a good goal from Kenwick. It's always good to get the first goal in the third quarter. What do you think, Lou? Oh, this is true, yeah. yeah. Well, Lou, when I was playing football, I used to get them all the time. Yeah. What? Kicks. <laughs> goals, goals. Waiting for the ball to come back now. He goes to the bounce from umpire Sandwich, in goes Billy, he doesn't win the knock. What he goes in, he's been going in hard all day in the centre there, as is Jago, he applies the tackle. Brad Brown backs into the ball, that's clever play, allows Wada to come in, pick the ball up, gets on the left boot. But uh, Calm Scott in front there, through Brian Arvin. He kicks out now onto the scoreboard wing. There's Colin Wishart. He's leading in the race of the ball. Well, he's thrown out of the way by the Colm Scott player. Pushed aside. In goes Brad Brown. He gets it out to Pissy Upman. He runs inboard looking for Jago. Jago gets yet another kick. There goes a the kick looking for Nigo. He's got two players on him. Recovers well. Gets a push in the back. Umpire calls play on. In goes Neil McCormack. Gets the handball back to Jags. Jags with a kick now. Long into the goal square. And there we find David Rhodes taking a great overhead mark in the goal square. Well, this could be another goal to Kenwick. We'll take him on to 11 goals and put them three goals in front. David Rhodes with a kick. He's only about well, 12 yards out, straight in front. I don't think he'll have any trouble putting this one through. There's the kick. Drop punt. Put your glasses away. That's through for six points. Man. Well, Kenwick have uh, started this third quarter in fine fashion. They've already got two goals on the board, and uh, they look to be steamrolling. Kelm Scott have come out of the uh, half-time change very groggy. And how's the score anyway, Lou? Well, we crossed the Bennett Hardware scoreboard for about the 30,000th time today, and we see Kenwick on 11 goals, 874, leading Kelm Scott, 9 goals, 256. And that's a margin of three goals. There goes the bounce run by John Nicholas. Not taken cleanly by Billy. Picked up by Jago. He gets to Libo, who's had a good day, but only kicks it as far as uh, Craig Bridie for Kelmscott. Bridie kicks out now, looking for Remo Vacker. There goes a short pass. A nest of Kenwick players in there. Chrissy Ackman gets a push in the back. Umpire calls play on. Alan Boundsy applies a tackle. That's dropping the ball, and that's a great tackle, AB. Remo Vacker a bit slow on that occasion. As uh, leads off in from Graham Nicholas further up the field. Alan Boundary kicks it. That's the way it goes. Nico can't take the mark. Well checked by Peter Adams. He gets the ball. Wrong foots himself. He kicks him in the centre. Where he finds Glenn Smith. Glenn Smith drives him up now. Alan Boundary to the back of the pack. Barry Nicholas from behind takes a good mark. Plays on. Handball over to Pissy. Pissy spins out of trouble. Goes the wrong way. Looks now for Wishart out on the scoreboard wing. He takes a good mark. <laughs> Colin Wishart reading the ball, reading the play very well, taking a few marks at the back of the pack today. What do you say, Lou? Yeah, that'd be right. That'd be right. Well, that's a great comment from Lou. Back to Serge now. There goes a tackle from Rosie. Craig Brody again, he's playing well for Tom Scott. He's cleared him out there on several occasions. The ball comes out now to the uh, commentary side wing at the boundary line beach. We're going to see a boundary throw in right here in the grandstand wing. There goes the boundary throw in. Up goes Sherby for Calm Scott. He doesn't win the knock. Whitty knocks it only as far as Jago. He's had a bundle of possessions. Gets the handball over to Watto. Watto to Barry. He can't take it cleanly. But in goes Pissy, and that's a great pickup. Well done, Chris Upman, from the middle of that pack. Drives Kenwick long into attack. 
Down towards Rosie. Rosie in front takes a fine mark. What a great grab, Dave Rose. And Pissy up with him. That's your goal. Spun out of that pack. Gets it over to Rosie. And I'm pretty sure Rosie will put this through for a major. Yeah. What do you think of that, Mark, Lou? I'd That's say good. So. Thanks, Lou. <laughs> okay. I thought you were Lou. That's right. You're Sergeant. That's right. You hear a pin drop as Rosie moves in for this kick. I tell you what, he's put it through. That's another six points for Kenwick. That puts him three goals in front. Sorry, four goals in front. Kenwick, 12 goals, 80. Leading Kelmscott, 9-2-56. Well, it's still early in the game, but uh, that's a very telling goal, that one. David Rhodes has uh, really lifted his game. Kicking two goals in the last five minutes. And uh, Kelm's got to have fired a shot so far this quarter. Yeah, yeah. Sounds like a snake. Umpire Zanich bounces the ball. In goes Billy. He's rucked tirelessly all day. Livo's in there lending a hand. Billy shuffles it out to Jago. He gets his umpteenth kick. Only as far as uh, Andrew Grant of Kelm's got the ball out there on the wing now. Wish he gets a handball over to baby Brad Brown. Kicks in towards the centre of the ground looking for Ashy. Well spoiled there by uh, Graham Scarry. Knocks the ball over to Sherpig. Sherpig gets the long hands over to Peter Adams. He drives. Colm's got long into attack. There's Dale Harris backing up for Kenwick. Gets the ball over to Wayne Ock. He has a good look. Sees Alan Boundary out on the grandstand wing. He takes the ball now. Spins onto his left foot. Looking down there for Nico. He's got Watto with him. Spins out of trouble. Gets it back to Watto. There goes a the kick, spiral punt in towards goal. That's offline and through for a point. Well, what I had Trippo on his own there, but uh, I don't think we've seen him and he's had a shot at goal and miss. Well, that point on the board puts uh, Kenwick four goals, one in front. Lindsay Cal taking the kick out. Finds uh, John Butcher out there in the back pocket. He goes a long 20 metre handball over to Colin Tingley for Kelm Scott. Looks in board, but only finds the beauty. There's a nest of Kenwick plays there. Kelm's got nothing to kick to up forward at the moment. There goes the kick. Rosie flies high at the back. He can't take it. Strong tackle by Neil McCormack. Umpire calls play on. In goes uh, Trippo. He's bundled out of it. Pissy's in there fighting hard. Puts on the left boot. And that's going to be out of bounds on the full. Or it might be a point. Yeah, we stop the mother. The what? Mother. There goes the kick in the butcher again. Didn't gain any ground there. Bam ball out. High kick. Kelm's got Tarden kissing around with it now. That's uh, Ricky Uckman, I think, out there. He gets the kick in board. Kelm's got to drive the ball along in the centre half forward. There goes Ray Rick. He takes the mark and check there by Billy. Kicks the ball long. Gary Nicholson can be dropped back to take a fine mark. He's got AB out on his own. Oh, that's shot and kick Gary Nicholson. That's out of bounds on the foot. He had Alan Boundary out there. He saw him on his own. He rushed the kick a bit. Pushed it out of bounds on the foot. And can to take the kick in there on the right half of the flesh. That's Remo back at the Kelm Scott. Goes in short, straight back to Barry Nichols, and he should thank you very much. Mark Riley not leading very well today, he's been close to check by two Timmons. There he goes the kick from Barry Nichols, off hands, play on towards the umpire, picked up by Sherpig. He gets boot to ball, drives and longing to attack. That's gone overhead of all the players, and he's going to go out of bounds. Right deep in the left forward pocket, the Colts got into the ground. You see a bounce from. There goes the throw in. Up goes Bealy. Brings the ball to ground. Stacks in the mill. Umpire Zanitz is given the kick to Tom Scott for dropping the ball. Well, he didn't have much of a chance to get rid of it then. What do you reckon, Lou? What do yeah, you I reckon. Like? You reckon? Well, that's good, Lou. Give me great support here in the commentary box. I don't know this is having a shot, but he's only about 20, 20 yards out, directly in front. Gets the boot to ball. Umpire moves on the side of that. Signals that one through the ball. I think you'll find that we've got beating the And how's the Bennett Hardware Well, crossing out of the Bennett Hardware scoreboard, we see Kenwick 12 goals, 10, 82. Uh, still in front of Kelm Scott, 10 goals, 2, 62. 
by 20 points. So three goals, two in front at about the 15 minute mark of the third quarter. Waiting for the ball to come back now after that goal. Well, if Kenwick can reply with another quick one now, I think that'll be just about enough to uh, discourage this going to side. Yeah, I reckon. Whatever you reckon. <laughs> <laughs> bit noisy here in the commentary box. Yeah, well, the crowd's come alive, I think. Uh, <coughs> this uh, spree of goals is going on. In goes Pissy up. And gee, he's gone straight through him all day, hasn't he? There goes the kick. Kelm's got Miles in front. Humble's out. Picked up by Jago. He has a quick look. He kicks it through for the goal. Well, that's a great kick by Arthur Jago. That's best race he's pretty. And that's the quick answered goal I was talking about. And I think that goal might uh, discourage a lot of the Kelmscott players. See one of the Kelmscott players coming off now. As we see Barry Clark going off for Kelmscott. I can't pick up that player going off at the moment. It's number 23, Andy Green. Well, we see uh, back to the scoreboard. We see Kenwick uh, three goals, two, four goals, two in front. Umpire John Nicholas to bounce the ball. Up goes Billy for Kenwick, wins the tack out. Goes to Bruce Stevenson, he knocks it in. Umpires down the free kick, and that'll go to Alan Bounce. He sees Watto all on his own, he's got a paddock, he'll have a bounce. Drives Kenwick long into attack with a wobbly spiral, looking for Ashy, but uh, Lindsay Kell's taking a fine mark down there for Tom Scott. The kick from Lindsay Kell out on the half court flank. In goes Neil McCormack. He gets boot to ball. That looks good. Umpire has move. Rosie throws his hands up in the air. And that's no mistake. That's through for a major. So another six points on the board. And uh, I don't know, but if I was a Kelm's got play, I'd be feeling too happy about that. I reckon. <laughs> well, can we really doing it well in this third quarter? I don't know what Nico said to him in the in the change rooms at half time, but he's really got them fired up and uh, they're all starting to uh, lift the game and contribute. Alan Bounds is starting to come into the game now. Barry Clark can't win the tap. Trippo gets the ball. Pissy bundle out of it. Kelm's got driving down there in the right corner pocket. Daryl Harris giving chase, so is Wayne Ogg. Woody beats them both to the ball, screws it back in there. Greeny's in there from the Kenwick. Don't stop play goes in there. Next the goal, that's done beating. He's stopped with that goal. The ball bounced into the goal square. Greeny was in front, got beat the ball. Phil Timberman's not happy with the decision, but that's through for the goal. My goal. That's a quick answer to that last goal from Kenwick. Four goals, two in front of the moment. What do you want? Where are the calls? Where are they? Oh, they drove. Where are they? Gives those little pussy. Your bloodshot eyes. Come over, please. Team of the John Nicholas bounced the ball. In goes Glenn Smith from Kelmscott, but the ball cleared now by Pissy. Neil McCormack with the ball, but the umpire's found a free kick, and that's to go the way of uh, Kelmscott's Craig Brighty. He's had a bundle of kicks today, too. Kicks it over to uh, Bruce Sherpig. Sherpig, long drop punt kick, down there looking for Witty, but he takes a mark in front of Daryl Harris. Gray Witt is about 60 metres out. Alex the spiral doesn't come off. Phil Timmons in front of Greeny. He's called his own player then. Going in board looking for Rick Upman. Finds Peter Adams. He gets the hammer all over the teammate. Alan Banton can't take it. Picked up by Kelm Scott. Over the half court flank and he's found Bruce Stevenson, the winner for Kelm Scott. He's got the ball. He's about 20 yards out. 
about a 45 degree angle. And he could put this one through. There goes the kick, drop punt, pushed it off to the left a bit. Ball still in play, picked up by Calm Scott. Boundary umpire's called it out of bounds, and we saw Boundary throw it deep in the forward pocket for Calm Scott. <laughs> there goes the boundary throwing up, goes Billy for Kenwick. Knocks it back, picked up by Kelmswood. That's a left foot snap. Umpire's seen a free kick. And I think it'll go the way of Daryl Harris and Kenwick. He must have got a push in the back then. Did you see it, Lou? Uh, no way. No. <laughs> Out of bounds in the full, sorry. Yes, we just had words from our special correspondent sitting in front of us here. Out of bounds in the full. Boy, Ray Greenwell's kicking the man on the mark. The ball's ricocheted out of bounds. So we're going to see a throw in about 30 yards around from the goals. The count's got into the ground. Bealey's rocked all day. He's winning most of the hitouts except for that one. That goes to the count Knocked on. In goes Sidey, he can't get a boot to ball. Picked up there by just like Graham Nichols. Content to give the uh, point away. As he's run through the goals and that uh, taunts up another point for Colm Scott. Phil Timmons with a kick out now, finds Barry Nichols on his own. He's got Wayne on running past, he tells him to go long. Down the direction of Jago. Jago versus Butcher. This is out Mark Jago. That'd be, that'd be the only occasion today that that's happened. Jago's played in front all day. Gets it over to Sherby. Sherby kicks long looking for Riley. Phil Timmons in front of the pack. Greeny at the back. Knocks it through. Graham Nicholas gets the ball now. Long handball over to Bealey. He's got a paddock. Got Lily caught. Gets the handball out. Two Camps got players leading the race of the ball. Picked up. Kicks in towards Woody. And there's Oggy. Tom O'Reilly with the ball now. He can't pick it up cleanly. Daryl Harris is in there for Kenwick. So is baby Brad Brown. And he clears with ease. Over to Barry Nicholas. He's caught. Gets it to Daryl Harris. He gets it out. Finds Brad Brown. Left foot handball over to Jago. He's in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that was a beauty. Gets it over to AB. He gets boot the ball but can't find Livo. The ball's boundaries going to beat them both. <laughs> I like that. I'll have to use that one more often. Really? A left hand in boy. A left foot hand boy. <laughs> there goes the throw in. Ashy wins it for Kenwick. Only as far as Butcher for Kelm Scott. He can't pick it up. Paddling on in front. In goes Ashworth and he bundles him over the boundary line. We're going to see the boundary throw in. Wait a minute. <laughs> Rosie going up for the ruck, he wins it. Only as far as uh, Peter Adams for Colmstead. Kicks it straight to Graham Nicholas. He takes the ball. Looks for Wishart, the running player out there on the half forward flank. Wishy's got the ball. Kicks in towards Neil McCormack and he's found him in the pocket. Neil McCormack's difficult angle out there. He's only about 20 yards out, but deep in the right foot forward pocket. He's going to have a shot. There goes the kick. Long drop punt. Looks like a point from here. Yes, it's gone through for the minor score. Lindsay Kell with the kick out for Kelm Scott. He's got a lead offering from Mel Hancock. That's the way the ball goes. But Jago reads the play. The better of the two. Alan Boundary Shepherd's well. Jago caught. Tackled, umpire calls play on, picked up by Sherby, he gets the handball, over to Bruce Stevenson, left foot kicking, looking for Woody, Daryl Harris is a yard behind, Woody takes the ball, gets it over to Stevenson again, has a bounce, it runs past Daryl Harris, kicks long towards goal, Mark Riley on his own, drops a mark, Phil Tippins closely checking him, picked up by Greeny and he kicks it out of bounds on the halfback flank. Waiting for a boundary throw in. About 25 yards around from the Kelm Scott goal. Throw in Rosie contests the ruck for Kenwick. In goes Greeny, gets the handball as far as Watto. 
Squad A on the left boot, looking for AB, finds that play on the chest. Alan Boundsy on the left, looking for Jago, that's a great kick. Jago's got the ball, the lead's on from Macca, ignores that one, looks for Trippo. Trippo with the ball now, runs on, kicks in towards goal. At the back goes uh, Bealey, he can't take the mark, and the Kelm's got player content to see the ball over for a point. Ninety-five plays sixty-nine. There goes the kick in. Finds Peter Adams. Kicks it out towards the scoreboard wing. It's uh, Bruce Stevenson, I think, for Kelmscott. Kicks it to a teammate. He goes in the centre looking for Sherpig. Sherpig takes yet another mark. Plays on. Kicks down there, but Wayne off. Ever reliable in the back of the back of the mark. He's got AB on his own. That's the way the kick goes. <coughs> AB picks it up, gets a handball over to coach Graham Nicholas. And they go with a short pass looking to Trippo. He takes the mark, gets a high tackle. That's got to be 15 metres. Yes, Zanich calling the player back now. Good player, man. Yeah, well, that's Brian Arvin from Kelmscott. He uh, got a bit carried away then and nearly ripped Trippo's head off. Well, he's put Trebo within range now, and he's only about 30 metres out. On the wrong side for left footer. Drives this one in deep. That looks good from here. I tell you what, that's going to be close. Through for a point where you couldn't tell from this angle, could you, Lee? No. No. No way. Well, thanks, Lee. We just see the runner from Thomas coming back. He's uh, obviously had a few words out there with coach uh, Graham Nichols. There goes the kick from Cal. Colin Wishard drops back and takes a uh, timely mark. He's about 40 yards out. Looks for the short pass to Ashy and finds him on the chest. That's uh, Pete Ashworth. He's about 35 yards out. 45 degree angle on the right half forward flank to Kevin. It's not beyond Ashy. You can kick this uh, with ease. That's good. He's uh, kicked eight goals in the second semi about two weeks ago. We shouldn't have any trouble putting this one through. There goes the kick. Umpire moves to the right. Has a close look and says, no, that's through for major. So another six points on the board for Kenwood. Looking over now to the Bennett Hardware scoreboard. We see Kenwick 15 goals, 13, 103. Leading Comscott, 11 goals, 369. <laughs> Well, there's 34 points in it, and uh, Kenwick have really kicked on in this third quarter and made a, a game. There goes the bounce from Zanich, up goes Rosie, flies a bit early. Gets the handball over to Sherpig, Sherpig to Witt. Sherpig and Witt have had a few possessions uh, this quarter for Kelmscott, but uh, the rest of the Kenwick players have kept him close to the he goes, ooh, up goes for the Timmy Jamar, giving a free kick away here. The umpire's played the mark, number 20 for Comstock, that's Steve Vickers. Well, this is a certain goal as Wickers moves in. Pickers and Pickers, that's uh, no, just, that's uh, six points on the board for Kelmscott. Well, they really needed that goal because uh, they haven't kicked many in this quarter and uh, Kenwick got to about a five goal lead. That's narrowing the lead back. I think we'll see Kenwick with a quick answer for that one. Good to play, Adam. See you later. Good. 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 And I will. Can we? Sue is. Sue comes and picks me up later on. There goes the bounce down. Rosie wins the knock for Kenwick. Tapped on by Livo as far as Jake's. In goes Stevenson for Kelmscott. Well, Rosie goes in with a hip and shoulder. Picked up by Watto. Long kick into the forward line. Taken by Ashy, he can't get the ball clear. Kicks from Kelmscott, lucky to find Craig Brighty on his own. Ashy uh, has given away 15 metres there. 
That's alright, that's a professional free kick that one. Pete Adams with the ball for Kelm Scott, goes in short looking for Riley. He's come a long way up the ground chasing the kick. He hasn't had any on Timberland, so he's come up looking for someone on the ground. He's stuck this one up, Alan Boundary, two spins out of top up, three out of top up. Well played, Alan Boundary, gets the herb ball out. Did more spins in the washing machine than Yeah, it's all well, uh, quick things. Kelm Scott with the ball now. Kicks it in, finds Sherpy. Sherpy kicks long down there. There's two of each. Bill Timmons over the top. Bit of kicking going on over there. The umpire's seen that kick and he's given Bill Timmons the kick. That's great, umpire. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, the ball. He's played a solid game. There he goes the kick. And as far as Glenn Smith for Kelm Scott. He goes in board. Pissy up in there for Kenwick. Drops what he should have taken, but recovers well. Tucks the ball under his arm. Gets the handball over to Watto. Watto in the centre of the ground. Goes a bomb. Look at that one. That's got to be a 60 metre spiral punt. I tell you what, it could bounce through. Oh, just missed. That one cleared the pack and would have been about a 100 metre goal had he got it, which would have put him in line for Swan Gold goal of the day. Yes, Wano took that kick from the centre of the ground, it cleared the pack and bounced through for a point. There goes the kick. He finds uh, Glenn Smith of Kelmscott. Livo on the mark. Alan Boundary goes up to Kenwick, punches the ball out of bounds, and we'll see a Boundary throw in on the uh, grandstand wing. Trojan in the ruck for Kenwick. Bundle out of it. Umpire calls play on. Smith gets the ball over to Whit. Whit drives him long into attack. And there goes the sign in the third quarter. Well, see you later. I think you're going to see a bit of a gap. So you better pick me up. No, I'm not. I'm going to just drive down. But what do I do? I'm just going to pick you up. Oh, they might be. We'll be back to see the final quarter in the grand final between Count Scott and Kenwick in just one minute. No, that's not easy. Uh, we're almost set for a start in the final quarter. The difference is four goals and five points in Kenwick's favour. Yeah, we're set for a really exciting final quarter of play, Luke. I reckon. I reckon. Yeah, I don't think uh, Kelm's got to stop running. They're going to fight back and uh, they've got plenty of yet in the way of football. Kenwick with a handy lead in the third change and... Uh, well, one thing for sure, I think we're going to see a result. We won't have a draw in this game. I can see uh, Kenwick winning by about five or six. There's a young man who's played well in the show. Yes, which is uh, surprised me. He's played a good game. That is surprising. Uh, no, in all fairness, which has played very well. Alan Boundary on the other side. Alan Boundary, uh, he came into the game that quarter and did uh, some of the matches we've uh, become accustomed to with him over the year. Uh, Phil Timmons has played very well all day, but uh, still I find Jago, he's played three points on the ball up now, and he's, uh, he's had a go at everything. And I'm pretty sure that he's going to get the... Uh, he's getting my votes anyway, he's messing with him. So uh, there goes a knock from Bealy. Gets to Watto. Watto to Wish. Wish goes long looking for Rosie. As she waits back, gets a handball over. Rosie to McCormack. That's a good Sits on the right move. It's gone on the other side of the post, and that's through to the point. Well, Kelm's not keeping the pressure on. As can we go to an even five goals in front? There goes the kick from the Kelm's got full back out to the right from the forward pocket. A mark taken there by a teammate. The left foot uh, mongrel punt. <laughs> Kenwick player in front. Kelm's got player in front. Gets the handball over to a teammate. Finds Sherpy. 
Sherpik takes a mark on the right half forward flank. Goes the handball over the direction of Witt. Witt kicks one short, but that's gone out of bounds. Throw in now about 25 yards around from the Kenwick goal. Uh, Kenwick's got goal. Tripo gets a kick in. Alan Boundary goes up in front, but the mark taken behind by the Colmscott player. Ricky Upton in there fighting hard. Pissy Upton, I should say. Colin Wishart chips him with a handball over to Watto. He goes to the pass. Neil McCormack, he's out position that time to turn around in time to see the ball and take a timely mark. There goes Ashley at the back. He can't take the mark. Lindsay Kell picks up the comes from Colmscott. Drives the ball along. Wishing too much height by the time for part of that occasion. And uh, Colin Tigley takes the mark over Wish. There goes the kick looking for uh, Bomber Riley. He gets the handball over to Doug Beatty. Spins around, gets the ball on the left. Over to Peter Adams now. He'll have a left good shot. Screw that one around. Not far enough, and that goes out of bounds in the left forward pocket for Kelmstock. Out of bounds in the full. Phil Timmons will take the penalty kick into Kemwick. Jago offers him a lead out of the wing out here. There goes the kick from Timmons, looking for Bealey. Kevin Bill in front, can't mark. Jago gets it over to Pissy. Pissy goes in hard. So does uh, Andy Grant from Kelmstock. The umpire's seen a free kick, and he's given it away to Chris Upland for a two-high attacker. Ricky Ackman on the mark there. There goes the kick from Piss. It's a bit off the side of the boot. Nibbles tries to take the mark. Bound jump by his ball and out of bounds. I don't think it's on the floor. I think Graham must have tossed that before one out. Yes, Bound just throwing right in front of the, the grandstand win. There goes the throw in. Bill up to Kenwick. No one wins the knockout. Colin Wishart applies a tackle. Didn't have the ball. Unlucky Wish. And the uh, council player to take a free kick. There goes the kick, long looking for Riley. Chipped in as Daryl Harris, and he takes a good mark in the back of the pack. Gives it over to Watto. Watto has a bounce. It's all Kenwick there. There goes the kick, looking for Nico. Nico can't take the ball, punched out by Comstock, picked up by Neil McCormack, shrugs off the tackle, gets the handball over to Jago. Jago with the ball, spins out of trouble. Looks long, drives the ball down there, looking for Rosie. Rosie in front. Takes the ball now, plays on, kicks in the four line. There's a good mark by a top stop player, and that is uh, Brian Harvey. He has a look and drives the ball in the centre of the ground. Alan Boundary for uh, Kenwick went too early. Taken by Grant, Craig Wright of Colmstead. He gets the ball over the teammate who kicks long. That's a good 60 metre kick. Phil Timmons in front. Can't take the ball, picked up by a Colmstead player. Drives back in the middle. Wayne Ogg with a uh, hip and shoulder then sees the ball through for a point. So Timmermans with a kick out. As usual goes the long drop punt. Trippo gets one there in the back and he'll take a free kick. Mark Tripler for Kenwick with the ball, the left half-back flank goes down the scoreboard wing looking for Jago. Jago at the back of the pack takes a great mark. He really has played well today, Jake. So he plays on, the kick goes along the ground looking for Boundary. Boundary gets the ball but takes it out of bounds with him so we see a Boundary throw in over there on the scoreboard wing. Kevin Bill in the ruck, grabs the ball. Only as far as Ricky Ackman at the Colmstock. Looking for Witt. Finds Witt. He's too far out to score. The lead's on from Bomber Riley. He ignores that and goes long. Phil Timmons knocks that one from in front. But the boundary line beats them both. The umpire seen a kick and it's go to, to go to Phil Timmons for holding there without the ball. There goes the kick from Tim Mintz. He's gone around the mark. The umpire's asked him to take it back. Give him 15. I don't know what's happened there. He must have uh, run out of 
Angie, no. Angie's throwing. Couldn't pick that one. Dewey knocks the ball out to Trippo. Picks it up just inside the boundary line. Has a kick and that's gone out of bounds in the corner. Well, he must have kicked that one after he went out because we're going to see another boundary throwing. Well, we'll just see that one on the replay later and we'll be able to decide for ourselves. There he goes, the throw in about 20 yards around from the Kelmscott goal. Daryl Harris does the ruck work for Kemble. The boundary line beats them both and the ball goes out of it. Yeah. Well, this is the third boundary throw we've seen over there. And it's been scrambling footy in that pocket. Throw in. Bill does the ruck work for Kenwick. Trippo in there fighting for the ball, foxing for a free. Tom Scott plays the field for the free. Umpire calls play on, blows his whistle now and says, I'll bounce the ball. There'll be another bounce down in that pocket. Yes, uh, Zenix has found the free kick here to Wayne Ogg for trip. Uh, the Kilm's got play, had him by the foot. Ogg looks long for Neil McCormack, but uh, Craig Brody chips him with a high mark in front of him. He's played well all day, uh, Craig Brody for Kilm's got. There he goes, a long drop punt. Daryl Harris in the back of the pack for Kenwick. Umpires pay the mark. The uh, pace has slowed down a bit here. Kenwick uh, content to just play possession football. There goes the kick from what, what are Neil McCormack drops an easy mark. Taken by uh, Doug Beatty from Kelm Scott. He looks a bit up with what are the back of uh, Rick Utman. Takes a good mark. He kicks to Pissy up. He takes the mark here on the uh, grandstand win. Uh, Graham Nicholas offers a lead up forward. Pissy up and plays off around the man on the mark. Gets the handball over Jakes. Sets him up. Pops a high tackle. Gets the handball over Livo. Livo kicks along into the forward line. Up goes Ashley for Kenwick. He can't take the mark. Hang on. Down five's paid the mark. Well, I don't know if he held that one long enough, but uh, the Elfies played the benefit of the doubt. And Pete Ashworth's going to have a kick on a uh, fairly acute angle about 30 yards out to 40 yards out to goal. Mark Jackson moving into the kick. Drop punt. That's a good kick. Umpire moves around, and there goes the six shooters. Yes, that's a goal. Six points on the board for Kenwick. Out come the two flags, and that tells the story. Well, that could be the stealer. We're about 15 minutes into the final quarter now. In Kenwick, uh, six goals. Sorry, four goals, 11 in front. Yeah. Well, the Kelmscott running players are going to have to start running now if they're going to win this game. Kenwick with a handy uh, five goal lead. Graham Nicholas gets the ball out as far as Allen Boundary. He takes the mark, comes back in board. Looking for Rhodesy. Jago chips in front with a fine mark. He's taken several marks today, Jakes. Looking for Ashy. Lindsay Kelm in front for Kelmscott. He gets the ball, that's a good play by Lindsay Kell. The kick wasn't very effective and the ball goes out of bounds. Boundary 
throwing. It's actually doing the rock work for Kenwick. Wado gets the handball. Craig Bridie again for Kelms, but he's played well in that back line. Turning defence into attack. There goes the kick. He's found uh, Sidey, Skim's side bottom. He's about 35, 40 yards out from goal. Shouldn't have any trouble with the distance. There goes the kick. Slightly off the left, and that's through for the minor score. The Kelms will clear use the goal there, that's for sure. I think time's running out from Lou. What do you reckon? I reckon. Thanks, Lou. There goes the kick out from Tim Moons, and he's found, uh, I think that's Captain Graham Nichols out there. You go with the ball, sees the lead from Neil McCormack. That's the way the kick goes, and McCormack in front, spoiled by the Kelmscott player. Picked up by a teammate, kicks long into attack. Then we see a great mark by uh, Steve Vickers of Colmscott over the top of Phil Turns. It was our position on that occasion, and uh, that's a good contender for the Swan Gold mark of the day. The kick from Vickers is his, that's a good one, that's six points. Lots of time and goal for Colmscott, not out of it yet with that one. Still about 15 minutes to go in this quarter, and uh, it's not beyond them, but Kimmick with a handy lead. I think it's uh, very appropriate if we just cross to the Ben of Hardware scoreboard. Yeah? And we see uh, Kenwick 16 goals, 15, 111. Leading Kelm Scott 13 goals, 5, 83. Difference of 28 points. Front by Zen for the bounce down. Ruck work won by Kelm Scott. Only as far as Watto, he gets a kick in, finds Neil the format. Maka looks long with that kick. Kelm's got it in the back. That's a fine mark for Kelm's got. That wasn't picked up by Lubbock. He kicks a point, and that registers a point for the board for Kimmich. The umpire was a bit inconsistent because he's played easier marks, or harder marks than that, and uh, he's let that one go. I thought that was a mark. What about you, Luke? I reckon. I reckon. Gets the ball over the side. He sells the dummy to Jago. Plays on. Left foot kick. Finds Bridie. Bridie over to Butcher. Butcher to Sherpy. Sherpy spins around. Right foot kick. Looking for Witt. He can't take the mark. Bell Harris chips in. Gets the handball over to Alan Boundary. He's going to have a run. It's about time AB had a run. There he goes. Three bounces. Four bounces. Handball. Over to McCormack. Back to Boundary. That's good play. Here we have the Swan Gold goal of the day. What an inspirational goal from Alan Boundary that is, and that's the seal of the shore. All the Kimmich players going over there to congratulate him. What an inspirational goal that is. He's taken the ball from the centre, had four or five bounces, gets the ball back, he's kicked the goal, and all the players uh, join in the uh, jubilation of that goal. Blue. Correct. Well, that's vintage Alan Boundary stuff, and he's really lifted his game since half time. <laughs> Chris Yuckman with the ball now for Kimmick. That kick was smothered by Bruce Stevenson of Kelmscott. He picks up the ball now, drives it down the half court flank, looking for wit. Scored by Augie, who punches the ball out of bounds. We see a boundary throw in about 40 yards around. The Kelms got caught. Get what? Boundaries run. Chago with the ball now. That's about his umpteenth kick. Good left foot kick over the boundary. He'd be a bit tired after that run. He drops that mark. Then goes the Kelms got player. Looking for wit. Barry Nichols chips in. Well played, Barry. He gets the handball over to Chris Ackman. In goes Jago. Umpire's paid to push in the back to Jake, and he'll take another kick. Well, Jago hasn't stopped running all day, Lee. That's for sure. Oh, there we see a Kelm's got player fly from behind. What's the umpire done? He might have paid the man in front, Billy, on this occasion. Yes, he has done the man in the front. 
There goes the handball over to Trippo. <laughs> Trippo looks for uh, Neil McCormack and he doesn't let him down and takes a fine mark in front of his kilm has got a home. Neil McCormack about 40 yards out. He's uh, been given a 15 metre penalty which puts him within range of his goals. 45 degree angle, probably about 30 yards out. There goes the kick from McCormack. It's a great drop punt. Goal umpire moves the left, through only for the minor score. Well, Kimmick, six even goals in front, 36 points in front. Dave Watterson flies from behind, drops the mark. Colin Wishart chips in, gets it over to Jago. Gee, he's played well, Jags. He gets my votes the best on the ground. Up goes Rosie, takes a fine mark. Rosie about 40 yards out, drop punt on its way into the goal square. As she flies, no one near the ball. Butcher waits back to Tom Scott. Gets the hair by the teammate, but that's an effective play. It's picked up though by Doug Beatty. He kicks back in the centre of the ground and finds Kim side bottom. Sidey with the handball now over to Bridie. He'd be best on the ground from Tom Scott. There goes the kick from Bridie. He's found uh, Remo Vacker, is it? Gets the handball over to the teammate. Phil Simmons in front. Well played uh, Ray Greenwell, but the boundary line's beaten him. Phil Timmons in the box on now. That's uh, Ricky Ackman. I don't think that'll uh, eventuate very much at all. Umpire's <laughs> found a free kick. That's going to go Bealy's way. Greeny calls for it, gets the ball. Gets the kick out now. Looking for Wish. Wish he chips in with a fine mark out on the uh, grandstand wing. Graham Nicholas here telling him to steady down. He's got all the time in the world. Wishy taking his time. Nico offering the lead. There goes the kick from Wish. And he's found Nico and takes a diving mark over the boundary. That's a good kick from Wish. Nico with the ball now. There goes the lead from Ashy. That's the way the kick goes. Ashy waiting in the back, tries to take a one-hander. Picks up the crumbs. Can't get rid of the ball. His other hand was held, but the umpire's played dropping the ball. Kim Sidebottom with the ball now, kicks it in the centre of the ground. It's uh, AB for Ken Weeks and 1-0 out there. But Bruce Sherpick knocks it on. In goes Oggy, he chips in with a handball over to Daryl Harris. Caught, but gets the handball to Watto. Watto spins around, has a look on the left boot, looking for Tribbo. He gets away from his opponent. Gets the handball back into no one in particular. Trying to do it all on his own, and does. Gets on the left foot, looking for Rosie. He drops the mark. And gee, uh, Trippo did all the hard work on his own then, and uh, Rosie never finished it off. There goes the handball over the butcher. Back to Bridie. There goes the kick. Well pressured by Kendrick and uh, Ian Livingston, and that kick was ineffective and has gone out of bounds. Boundary throw in about 50 yards around from the Kenwick goal. Bealy wins the knock as far as Nico. There goes the kick from Peter Adams of Colm Scott. But uh, waiting back in defence is baby Brad Brown for Kenwick. Gets it over to Pissy Uckman, spins out of trouble. Tucks the ball under his arm. Gets the left foot kick. Up towards Neil McCormack, he can't take the mark. Kim side bottom knocks it on the Bridie. Over to Butcher. Butcher back to Bridey. He's tried hard all day. Wishart applying the pressure and has given away a free kick <coughs> for holding the man. Over to side bottom. Has a look. Kicks long down the centre half forward. Barry Nicholas there for Kenwick. Knocked on by Witt. Witt gets it over to the teammate. He's tackled over to Ricky Upman. Puts in the left boot. And through for a goal to Ricky Upman. That's Kelm Scott's 14th goal. But there's still five goals behind. Bennett Hardware scoreboard. Kenwick 17-17, 119, leading Kelm Scott. 14 goals, 5-89.
That's a lead of 30 points. The whole time's running out for Callum Scott. There's only about 10 minutes left in this final quarter. And uh, I can't see him you know, kicking, kicking more than five straight to win this game. But then stranger things have happened. Lou. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, we see uh, Captain Coach Graham because of the ball, and I'd say he's a very happy man at this stage. Looks over there for Neil McCormack. And uh, a lot of the Kelm's got defence now. Of, uh, I think they've thrown the towel in. They realise that uh, the result in this game is inevitable. It's just a formality from here. And uh, there goes the kick from Neil McCormack. Offline, through from minor school. Well, that's five goals, one in front of Kenwick, and uh, I don't think Kelm's got to come back from here. Craig Bridey gets an, yet another possession. Handballs over to Sherpy. Back to a teammate. Kicks long. Daryl Harris waiting back from Kenwick. Outplayed with that time and takes a good mark. Alan Boundary chips the ball over to Trippo. Trippo on the left boot. He's been a free. Yes, he's penalised the Kelm's got play here in the free kick to go to Ashen. Peter Ashworth about 30 yards out, slight angle. Pushes that one off to the side. Nico leads in the chase for the ball. Gets it out to Livo. He can't get the ball clear and umpire John Nicholas says I'll take a bounce. Roji does the ruck work over to Ashy. Ashy on the left boot has a snap. Didn't come around enough and that's through for a minor score to Kimwick. A few of the crowd starting to leave now. Yes, we find a few of the Colts got supporters starting to leave. <laughs> and I can't blame them. I'd be going home too. I oh, do. <laughs> We see Watto, big torpedo punt kick. Ashy in front, claims the mark, umpire's paid it. And a lot of the spectators are starting to leave the ground now as they realise uh, the result in this game is inevitable. Well, I predicted Kenwick by five, it's uh, Kenwick by about seven at this stage. Yes, the turnstile is starting to click over now as the people leave the ground. And there goes that goal from Ashy. And I'll say Kenwick have sewn up this 1983 grand final. Look at Ashy, he's jubilant, he's played well today, he's kicked a bag of goals, and he's got great reason to be happy. I already did, mate. Oh, about five or six Ds. Oh. Well, just summarising some of the better plays for Kenwick today. We've had Jago. He's been he's been without doubt the best on the ground. But we've had uh, Bealey's rucked all day. Tyler's thing. He's he's got to get a vote. We see uh, Chris Uckman's played well all day. There goes the kick from Green and the ball's gone out of play on the grandstand wing. Watto's had a bundle of kicks. Uh, Colin Wishart's played well all day, as has Alan Boundary. The centre line supremacy of uh, Ken Wick has been a major factor in this uh, great game so far today. Phil Timmons has played extremely well at full back, keeping Mark Riley to just the one goal. Uh, 
Uh, I think you can't go past Lulo's first uh, half, or second quarter, I should say. He played extremely well. What a boomer! Who kicked that? That's super boot uh, Bruce Sherpig, I think, kicked that one. Registering uh, Calum Scott's 15th goal. Yeah, the story's on the scoreboard. Ken Wick, they've made history here by winning their first ever league premiership. It's not all over yet, but the siren about to go. We're probably into the time on by now. All the Kenwick supporters getting ready to run onto the ground and congratulate their team. Umpire John Nicholas will take the bounce. Billy wins yet another tap. Jago in there fighting hard. Won by uh, Rick Uckman. Knocked over to Graham Nicholas. He gets a high tackle. Ball goes to Wayne Ogg. He has a run. Runs his full 15. Kicks now along in the forward line. As she waits back, he's got the goal mouth open, shoots for goals, puts it through the middle, and that's another six points for Ashy. And look at him go. He's a very happy man at this moment. Well, Ashy must have kicked about seven or eight goals, and he's played extremely well. There's another two happy men, Chrissy Uckman and Colin Wishart. Yes, well, they've got a lot to be happy about. Both have uh, been major contributing factors to this great win. I thought Wishart was going to take his jumper off. I thought he might have put the siren at goal. His socks down. He looks like he's had a hard game. Yeah, well, he hasn't done much, but he thought if he pulled his socks down, rubs a bit of dirt on his face, you never know, he might get a vote. <laughs> Mind you, he's, I notice his hair isn't messed up at this stage, so uh, he'd want to mess that up as well. There goes the bounce. There goes Billy, too. Trippo's in there fighting. He's had a quiet day. I think he might be carrying an injury. He's limping at the moment. Ray Greenwell hasn't given in. Boundary throw in in front of the grandstand. Billy takes it, gets the handball over to Trippo. Long left foot kick down there looking for Rosie. Lindsay Kell in front for Kelmscott. He's tried hard for Kelmscott. Wishart picks up the crumbs, has a bounce. He leaves Butcher of Kelmscott, gets dealt with after he's kicked it, but the ball goes through for a point. Well, this game really has slowed down the last half hour. So is the commentator. Yeah, well, that's true, uh, Lou. I reckon. You could lend me a bit of support. Can we just be messing around at the moment? No, yes, well they can afford to play possession football, can't they? They're in front and uh, they're going to take out this 1983 grand final and they're going to do it in fine fashion. Waiting on the countdown from the siren. There it goes. That's it. It's all over. The 1983 SS MN FL grand final to Kenwick. Yes, that's the Royals. Kenwick have won their first grand final at the hands of captain coach Graham Nicholas. And that's it for me. I'm going to go join in the celebration. Well, a very jubilant Kenwick side and well. Reps. See you again next year, same prime, same channel. <laughs> same bat channel. <laughs> Once again, congratulations to the Kenwick side. <laughs>